G'day Virgin Pilots, it's Requiem. In today's video we're going to look at Case 1 departures in the F-18 Hornet. So without further ado, let's get into it. There are three cases for carrier departures and which departure use is determined by the local weather. For Case 1, this is going to be day VFR, so the ceiling is going to be above 3,000 feet and visibility greater than 5 statute miles. Case 2, it's going to be day marginal visual conditions which will need a climb through IMC on the way out. This is where the ceiling is between 1,000 to 3,000 feet and visibility is still greater than 5 miles. In case 3, this is for nighttime or IFR only. This is when the ceiling is below 1,000 feet or the visibility is lower than 3 statute miles. When departing off a carrier versus an airfield, you can use the acronym CHEATER to remember the configuration changes for you. So the canopy is going to be closed during taxiing on a carrier deck. The hook bypass will be in carrier. Injection seat is going to be armed while you're taxiing. The anti skid is going to be off to give you full braking control. And the tack end is going to be set and tuned to the carrier, um, the frequency and the BRC. You can use that for departure. And the radar altimeter is going to be at 40 feet. This will let you know if you're having an excessive sync rate after launch. Following the flows will get you to this point, but I just wanted to highlight the differences for you here. All right, so we're starting off on the carrier. Uh, everything's all pretty much set up in the airplane. All I've got to do is tune the TAC can and we'll be good to go. So we press the TAC can button to bring it up. The frequency is going to be 71 X-ray. X-ray is colonized, that's fine. Press enter and we'll turn it on. And then we press push button five here. This will turn the TAC can information on, make it available for us to look at. You can hold down the coarse needle and then you can input a BRC directly, and for us it's going to be 353. Hit enter, and that's set the BRC for the carrier. Now, the BRC is the base recovery course, and what this means is it's the magnetic course that the carrier is traveling along. So, when we do our departure, we're going to fly parallel to this course. Now, getting into the whole layout of the carrier is a bit beyond the scope of what I want to do. I just want to point out that we have bow catapults and we have waist catapults. And if your departure off the carrier requires a clearing turn, then if you're going off the bow catapults, it's going to be a clearing turn to the right. And if you're using the waist catapults, it's going to be a clearing turn to the left. So looking out to the right, I'm going to use bow catapult number two, which is right there. So in order to get moving, I'm going to have to remove the wheel chocks or request that. Chief, remove the wheel chocks. Copy. Wheel chocks are now removed. All right, now the wheel chocks are removed, we can release the parking brake, clicking the left mouse button. Increase the power a bit, check the brakes work. Now we are going to need to make a relatively tight turn, so we're going to put the nose of the steering into high gain. This way, if an aircraft was getting ready on Catapult 3, then we wouldn't necessarily be in their way for very long or at all. So our goal is going to be to line up behind the jet blast deflector here for Catapult number 2. There isn't an aircraft there right now, but if there was, then this is where we would stop and uh, go through the before takeoff flow. So now that we've come to a stop, we can set the parking brake, left click and mouse wheel back towards us, and then we'll have a look at the before takeoff flow now. Alright, so going through the before takeoff flow for the carrier, going to get the left DDI, and we're going to set that to the HUD page. And then coming over to the right DDI, we're going to go to the support menu, and then bring up the checklist page. This will give you the takeoff checklist as well as the aircraft weight, and on this weight we'll need to set our nose up stabilizer trim to 17 degrees. Coming down, we're going to unfold the wings. If we didn't do this now, then the aircraft director would tell us when we start getting closer. And uh, we hold off on locking for right now. And once the wings are completely spread out, give it a count to five seconds. And then we'll use the mouse wheel on that handle forwards, and that'll lock the wings. The caution lights are out, injection seat's armed. And so now we'll disconnect the nasal steering. And we'll do the controls wipeout. So just looking for full range of motion for all the control services. Put the nose of steering back on low. 
Then just go through the takeoff checklist on the right DDI. Once you're satisfied those are all done, then you can bring up the FCS page. And then we can continue taxiing towards the catapult. So we're going to get the parking brake off, increase the thrust, and get ourselves lined up. So technique-wise, with these five antennas in the front, I'll line up the center one with the catapult. I'm riding the brakes as well at this point. That way I'm ready to apply extra pressure on the brakes to kind of stop when the aircraft director signals me. With some close fists, let's stop. And the other ground crew are going to come out and do their thing. The aircraft director tells us to extend the launch bar, so we do that. As the aircraft director runs back over to the side, he's going to tell us to start moving forward. This is to bring the launch bar over the catapult shuttle, so you may need about 85% RPM in order to get over the hump, and you'll notice a strong drop to indicate you're over it. There it is, gives us a stop signal. Then it's going to indicate to raise the launch bar. So we'll do that. This is going to seat the launch bar on the shuttle. Catapult also takes control and gets you ready for final checks and gives you the engine run-up signal. So here we do a quick look at the flow for that as well as the actual departure and what that looks like. So here's the takeoff flow and then a couple of seconds later uh, you'll end up needing the departure flow. So that's this one here. This example we're going to be using a bow catapult launch. So it's going to be a right hand clearing turn. So we'll turn right 20 degrees, reach 500 feet, come back left and we'll parallel the BRC at 300 knots. Alright, so we have the run up signal. So we increase it to military rated thrust. Do a final control wipe out if you'd like. Verifying everything the FCS is showing correctly. Then you'll throw it into afterburner. Once your engine's stable, you can let off a salute using right control, shift and S. Then you get the thumbs up and you get ready to go. Positive rate of climb, gear and flaps both come up, we'll bank to 30 degrees, make that right turn, 20 degrees off to heading 010. As we start approaching 500 feet and 300 knots, we'll pull the power back and roll the airplane back to parallel the course for the BRC. Now you're paying attention to the course indicator there on the HUD. You want it to be offset to the left if you're using the bow departure and you want to use that offset to the right if you're taking it from the waist catapult and just paralleling it so this way you want to keep the course stable in the HUD and not moving away or towards you if it is moving away or towards you you're going to have to apply a wind correction in order to maintain a stable course so now it's just a matter of maintaining the 300 knots 500 feet AGL until 7 nautical miles at which point you can initiate a climb in VMC on whatever course you like just remembering that the standard climb is going to be 350 knots, so at military rated thrust it's going to be about 15 degrees nose high. That completes the video in case one departures in the F-18 Hornet. Until next time, remember to fly safe and check your six.